the Red Sea in front of you, two rock faces on either side of you, and the Egyptians coming at your back. What are you going to do? You can't swim? Come here, we're going forward under my tree. So you're preparing yourself mentally to deal with Aethor, the dry place, the edge of the desert. I say, alright, I have to make up my mind, we're going across this desert. But suddenly you hear an instruction that totally blow your mind. Ah, oh, we're turning back. The Lord said we are to turn back. Turn back, turn back. Hello? Um, Egyptians behind us? Uh, back to Egypt? <laughs> no. Not back to Egypt. That you might have one or two reactions, you see, when you hear a thing like that. You're just coming out of a rough time. You prepare yourself mentally to deal with, all right, I'm going to have a little dry season. But then to turn back and go where you come from, are they going to complain? Or you'll be glad to go back to what is familiar to you. I want you to understand that this is a cage mentality though. If you ever trap a mongoose in a cage and keep it there for days and feed it, once you open that cage, it, is, it will take days, maybe even weeks for it to venture past the door of the cage. You see the cage mentality, the cage mentality likes us to stay within the boundaries of the familiar. What we know. All right, so you know that if I touch the edge of the cage, it's going to shock me, so I just stay within what I know is safe. But one day the cage door opens and you go, wow, look at all of that out there. I mean, I mean, this was what I was seeing from in the cage and I don't know how, but I said the door opened. Maybe I should venture out a little bit, but then you remember, all right, when I lean against the cage wall, I get shocked, so maybe I should just stay around because I know that right here, we know the safe area is right here, but eventually you venture out and you venture out a little further each time, a little further each time. But some of us, instead of locking the cage and throwing away the key, we leave the cage door open just in case you need a safe place to go back to. The word turn in Exodus 14 verse 1 is shub. It means to turn back, not necessarily a retreat or a return to the starting position. So no, you're not going back to Egypt. You're actually going to a new camp. And this one is even more terrifying than being on the edge of the desert. This new camp is literally between two rocks and the open sea. At your back. The enemy is pursuing you. If we continue to use the workplace example scenario, your oppressor might have just realized how valuable you are to the company. Their course of action might be, depending on how powerful they are, to try to make things difficult for you to get a job. Then in their thinking, you would have to come crawling back to them. Or they might make you an offer that they think you cannot refuse. They'll be like Pharaoh who will say, they are entangled in the land. There's that word entanglement again, can't be good. The wilderness has shut them in and they will pursue with all their might. <laughs> the question is, in your desperation, will you rationalize, rationalize that at least you know who they are and you can live with it better to go back? That's not your best course of action. Here's what to do. Don't complain, don't murmur. Don't say as the children of Israel. It's because you didn't have dirt to bury us in Egypt Why you take us out to die in the wilderness. <laughs> Even in your Christian walk, as you face difficulties, do not come into the agreement that it is better to go back to Egypt to serve them and their gods. Ask God, God, what is your purpose in this? You see, he's about to show you his strength. He's about to demonstrate to your enemies his might and power. Just trust him. Piha Kiroth, the mouth of caverns. <clears throat> For the first part of the word, P, the root is the Egyptian word spelled P-R. I don't know how to pronounce that. It also means house in the economic sense and is similar 
to the Hebrew word Beth, which also means house. The second part of the word Hakiroth may mean the edge of a cliff or ledge. God is, let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of the ledge, the cliff. Sometimes you have to take a leap of faith. I don't know if, I, I read one of, I was watching one of the, um, what name again? Harrison Ford star in it. Hmm. But anyway, it was the story of the lost ark and he was at a cliff and he put out his, Indiana Jones, put out his foot to take this leap of faith because he needed to get over to the other side. And he stepped on a bridge that he could not see from the perspective he was at. You see, we don't always see the bridge from our perspective of fear. This is why we need the heavenly vision. This is why we need to be in our rightful place as seated beside Jesus um, in the heavenlies, beside him seeing his perspective on things so when we are facing great difficulty or any difficulty it is best to ask god what you what am i doing here perched between let's look at it from a spiritual sense now the house of economy and migdol which is an encampment in the mountains near the sea of reeds however the root for Migdol, Gadal means to become great, and Migdol actually means a place or agent for greatness. So in your difficulty, remember God is positioning you for economic benefit and for greatness. It's just that it comes with some challenges, some things need to be worked out in us, some um some, you know, some little, as the one pastor I know would say, dirty sit down, things that sit down in us that it's not going to help us when we get to that place of greatness. Bel Sifwan is the Lord of Darkness. So here you are, darkness on one side, a tower of rock on the other, the enemy pursuing you at your back and the Red Sea in front of you. <laughs> To go back is to face death. To go forward is the only way. Stand still and watch the Lord deliver you, you hear. Stand still even if you feel panic rising up. Is this not the Lord who spared you from the ten plagues? Is this not the Lord who led you to this point? Trust him and move forward because the only way is forward. Standing still is to calm your panic. Focus on him and his instructions. Afraid because you cannot swim? Put your foot in the water. Trust him. Moving forward is the only way of escape. As you trust him and put your foot in the water, look, an east wind is parting the sea. Crossover. The Lord has put the cloud between you and your enemies. They can't see you. They'll not even get near you. And is lighting the way for you. Do you notice that you are not slugging in mud? Yes, you are crossing over on dry land. Next time we meet, we'll be celebrating on the other side of the Red Sea and moving to our next campsite. We're stopping at the waters of Mara for some refreshment and moving on. See you under my tree.